Okay, so hello everyone. This is Zach coming to you from the Old Skona Academic School magazine. And what we're going to do today is just give you a basic idea of how to use Adobe InDesign to do computer layout for our articles and creative writing pieces. Now, first, I just want to show you sort of what the end result is that we're looking for. And here I've got an example. Just let me go into documents, school magazine. Here we go. So, this is what sort of what we're going for. We've got a very minimalist sort of uh, sort of feel and look, but that's what we want. You have to always think if something doesn't add to how the piece is interpreted or how the piece is received, then there's really no point in having it. So you'll see here we have title, author, relatively simple, um, a story text. There's a picture that's referenced by the story that was provided to us by the author. And then we have a, gra a graphic done by one of our artists. Um, so yeah, like the idea is if we can get the entire magazine to look like this, it'll be very much content oriented and it won't be just a lot of show. It'll actually have meaning and people will really take time to enjoy the works that our writers have put in. So I'm going to show you just how we went and we did this using Adobe InDesign. And Adobe InDesign is aimed at professional desktop publishing, things that are going to be published in print as well as on the internet. So here, the two files I originally got when I was asked to do this were this file, this document file, and this is just the text, and there's a picture there. Um, the picture is referenced in the story. Make sure you read the story before you start doing a create a layout, just or computer layout, just because that could drastically uh, change what you want, what you want done with done with it. Um, we have to always be very careful of how space is distributed, um, because it's not free to print a magazine in like large numbers of copies. So we see, we immediately see that there's a lot of empty space around the sides of these of this picture. So we'll have to work at that work and see if we can eliminate that. And then the other photo, the other uh, file I got was this drawing by one of our um, by one of our artists and. Uh, he he scanned this piece. It's it's fine. Uh, it's upside down and it's in a large file, much larger than it should be. But that's no problem. InDesign lets us take care of that really easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up InDesign. And this is uh, InDesign CS4. I'm using a trial, but um, if you have a licensed version, the school also has licensed versions we can use. Um, so next, um, takes a while to load, but that's because it's a really huge program that's very professional use. And so this is what you get when you finally open InDesign. Um, we can open a recent item or we can just open a new file. But what we want to do is we want to create a new document. And each document will be either an article or a personal response or a piece of creative writing or something like that. So we're going to create a new document. And we know from looking at this file that, well, you know, um, with this and then if we put the... Um, put the artwork back in and maybe resize the font uh, we can probably fit this in about two pages so we're going to do that we're going to go into InDesign and we're going to say two pages facing pages that's fine everything else is just default we can leave it like that because that's what we want if you wanted to do a landscape you you would check check this box and that changed the width and height appropriately but we don't this is just going to be read top down left to right normal style so two pages facing pages okay so now we have like a canvas a workspace in which we can do our work this is our first this is our first page up here and then this is our second page that would be facing it if we printed it out on the left here we have our toolbar and this is where you select exactly what tool you're going to use for whatever job you want the most common one is the one we've got selected right now and this is just the black cursor the selection tool and so what this lets us do is it lets us select items, resize them, move them about, do all sorts of things with them. Just It gives us a good amount of control over how we want everything to be set out. The next tool that we're going to be using is this text tool or type tool. And it lets us create text boxes and manipulate text because as a magazine, there's obviously going to be lots of text we need to know how to work with. You'll notice that upon clicking on this text icon, our cursor changes. And we can use this to drag a new text box. Notice now we have a cursor that I can type a little message I want. Right? Functions exactly like a word processor. Um, yeah, pretty simple to use. 
you'll notice that when we click the text button that this up here will change into a bar that lets us format our text font style uh, size and any other ornamentation and uh, justification or yeah so uh, really easy again if you're familiar with word processing this shouldn't be anything new once we've got our text box created we don't actually have to put any text in it immediately but what we can do is resize it to fit our page because most of our page is going to be text you'll notice that this pink border around the page that's where the cutoff line is when it gets printed anything outside of that will not get um, anything outside of that will not appear on the page and the black border that's this one around here is in fact the size of the page itself so the the space for borders on the printed page will be the difference between the content on the inside and the black and the black space so if you wanted to fully maximize our use of the page we would go all the way to the pink line but because we don't know if someone might want to do borders or something with it we usually leave a little bit of space so I'm going to drag this text box. If you want to resize a text box, just click on one of the corners or sides, one of the squares, and then you'll notice that you can drag it around and make it as big a size as you want. So we'll just leave a little bit of room in the border. That's now we've got a, a good sized text box that takes up most of the page. However, one of the first things we want to go is, and is because we've read the, uh, the text given to us by the author, we know that they consider this uh, this graphic to be somewhat important so what we're going to do is in order to eliminate the space we just want to, I think we just want to have this sort of on the right on the right side or left side personal preference um, and then wrap the text around it this allows us to get more text on the page yet still keep you know the relatively same effect that the author was going for with this picture so I'm going to go right click on the image and copy it and we're going to put this in and then we can rearrange the text around it. So right clicking in InDesign, paste. See there's our graphic, it's the same size as what it was. Note that if you want to move it around we have to go back to the selection tool, this black arrow. So we can move it around, I'm going to leave it the same size it was, no need to mess with uh, what the author's already picked out. Okay, and so that, that's not in our text box but it's on the same area, so if we were, which we are, going to go and take all our text from here we can delete this we can copy it just copy the entire text and paste in the text box however we have a problem we notice that we haven't put everything in our text box and that's to be expected so what we're going to do is we're going to undo that and because I've already done this this usually takes some trial and error I know exactly how much text we can fit into the fit into the story uh, on the first page I know we and from experience I know that up to on the battlefield we can actually fit in so we're going to copy that make sure to click in the text box with the text tool before you do anything before you paste it so now it looks like we still have some um, some room to maneuver and that's good because you'll notice that almost none of the formatting has been preserved um, so we're going to have to do that now the first thing we want to know is that title should be center justified and the uh, or title and the author and the title itself should be underlined. Again, these are all icons you're pretty much familiar with from applications such as Microsoft Word. We've got it on center justify, which we don't want. Okay, we've got, yeah, that's center justify, and this is all left justified. Now, uh, the style that the author originally used that we're going to keep with is that you don't have leave a line between paragraphs, but you do tab in. So I'm going to click at the beginning of every paragraph that the author originally had an indentation and I'm going to put an indentation so note that some stuff is not visible because of the picture and we're going to deal with that later that's it for part one and we'll see you in part two